Hi guys, welcome to the first episode of my podcast. I am making this podcast about my book, I'm the Prize Said Who. And so I brought on two wonderful guests, great friends of mine, um, Prophet Dre, I'll let you guys introduce yourself, but Prophet Dre and Cabria, wonderful people who are going to help me talk a little bit more about this book and talk about some controversial topics today Mm -hmm. to help marriages, basically. So I have this beautiful married couple, if you guys wanna introduce yourselves. Go ahead, you first, baby. Uh, hi, I'm Cabria McGee, his wife, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, um, I'm the uh, Prophet DeAndre McGee. I'm the husband of my beautiful wife, Cabria McGee. Um, I'm really honored to be here. I'm, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Okay, I'm All looking right. forward to it too. So yes. just to break the ice, right, I had sent you guys my book. Um, I've been promoting it and stuff, but I just want to talk a little bit more about it so people know what they're buying or just, you know, what your thoughts were about the book that could inspire people to want to read it as well. So what were your thoughts when you read it? Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, I just want to tell the lovely ladies out that y'all gear up. Okay? Oh. It's a hard pill to swallow. Mm-hmm. You know, we're mm-hmm. always talking about what the men, men, what they do wrong in society. Yes. We point fingers at the men, but yes. we never, it's like us women, we like to throw a rock and hide our hands. Yep. We need to talk Ooh. about what we do. <laughs> he feeling it. Feeling it. <laughs> let's talk about yeah. what we do. We right. already know what the men do, but let's talk about what the women do, you know? Yeah. We are, we're both human. We make the same mistakes. Right. So we we're always talking about holding the men accountable as women need to be held accountable. Too. Right. Yeah. So. That book was off the chain. Okay, amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. And I, I give it a 10 out of 10. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And I sure. highly... You listened to it, too? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. We write it together, like, oh. twice. I highly yeah. wow. recommend um, women to get that book. I even have to say, like, reading that book, girl... Some of the stuff I'm still doing, I'm like, oh, I, I just did that yesterday. Baby. Oh, I need to fix that. Oh, like, dang. yeah, yeah it, it, you, you had some mm. a lot of uh, good, you know, jewels in that book. Oh, that's so amazing. much wisdom. So thank God for your story, girl. Oh, you are going to help yeah, so many good. women out there. Oh, I appreciate it. To, you know, it. hold themselves accountable. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's really what the book is about. Yeah. And then you guys read my testimony a little bit. I put a little bit of it in it in there. Did any of that shock you guys? Like. Uh, Go ahead, babe. Go ahead. Uh, as far as what, what you mean by when you say shot? Well, because I just what I did, you know, I was sharing about how my marriage got based off of my mouth, <laughs> you yeah. know, and was that a shocking testimony? Because a lot of people say, oh, I can't even picture you ever doing that. <laughs> well, I'll speak first yeah. real quick. Real no, quick honey, ahead, because see, we know each other. We met in school. Yes. Right. So did. when I met you, I would have never thought. I'm like, no way. Like, Jada, no. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people say that. But, yeah. <laughs> but when I read, I said, oh, well, but see, this is what I love. I love your humility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love your mm-hmm. humility. I, I love your honesty. Yeah. It was brutal. But that, I saw, like, I respect you so much, girl, as a sister. Oh. I, I kid you not, because I'm just like, we like oh. us women no, like to put on. No, I'm so serious because, no. you know, as women, like as women, we like to put on the picture perfect mm-hmm. with anything we do. A friendship, mm-hmm. being a sister, being right. a wife. We try to be so perfect in everything that we do. But the fact that you put your flaws out there. Yeah. Oh, it just it's like it, okay now I'm comfortable to undress some stuff too you know mm. what I'm saying so I'm just I like, created that space yes for women to that find door yes, yes, yeah did. but I was surprised I ain't gonna you lie. <laughs> reading reading your testimony um gave me reading your testimony explain exactly why Jesus went to the cross mm. Ooh, Ooh. gosh I didn't know I'm gonna come here and cry yeah. talking yeah. to y'all okay this is your testimony is why he died to shed his blood for us to have the access to the grace that God gives us mm-hmm. and the reason why we can be reconciled to God. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate your honesty and your and, and your humility to share your story because in society, especially within Christendom or in the church world, you don't really see that level of transparency. Oh, right. My God. And so for you yeah. to be, God, so, yes. for you not to only be um, that transparent, but to be the age that you are young, mm. oh, we we young people. Yeah, that's true. Um, we we weren't taught that level of transparency. We didn't see that. Oh, so I want to say, God bless you, mm. and I really appreciate you for putting yourself out there because that book not only challenges women, but when I was reading, I was like, yeah, I got some of them ways too as a man. Mm. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. I and love so it's that. making me reflect on some that's things amazing. as well. Mm. So I want to say I thank you for your yes. book. Yes. Uh, 
I appreciate it. Yeah. Yes. Thank you guys so much. Is there anything else you want to bring up before we move on from that subject? Real quick. Yeah. yeah. Like what he just said, like we were reading on the couch again. We read it again this morning. Yeah. Right. And Aww. We were literally stopping after like each chapter, reflecting like, okay, babe, you do do this. I, like it wasn't just. I know it's geared towards the women, mm -hmm. but the fact is that we both, you know, the opposite sex saw ourselves in this book. Yes. Right, says a lot. Right, you know. So I'm just like, babe, this is you. Okay, and this is me. Okay, you know, this is a really good point right here. Like right. it was just like. Yeah, I'm beautiful. Getting, me and mom getting emotional now. That's I don't beautiful. Know. It was beautiful. Oh, I love that. No, I, so, so I think that, that like um what you guys said of mm -hmm. like it it gave you guys the room to be open now mm -hmm. and i think that being in a narcissistic mentality that i was in and being like dang you know what i'm just wrong 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 with all of these things and stuff i think it can break free from a lot of people that are trapped in narcissism absolutely. you know what i mean absolutely um, so the more honest we are, the more we can actually break free from that for sure. So I love that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am so happy. Yes, girl. All right. So we're going to move on to our first question. We're going to get into some controversial topics. Um, okay. My first question is, and I want to talk about it more in another book I want to write about, but mm -hmm. it still goes, it still aligns with that book that I wrote do you guys think that modern day feminists is destroying feminism is destroying marriages and why and the reason why i bring this up is because i was a feminist i was hardcore but i was i would say modern day it wasn't about my rights it was just about i will not be submissive to my husband i want to be equal and that means not letting him Lead. play a role of leadership yes. at all i wanted to be the leader yeah. and that was like destroying our marriage because one person has to be the leader and 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 that doesn't mean i can't lead in other ways too yeah. where i'm helping show him a new perspective but there are roles and i would just say that that was destroying my marriage so what do you guys think um i, I will answer first mm -hmm. i i personally do think that modern day feminism is destroying marriages in the modern household here's why um when you look at that movement um it's rooted in a lot of ego yes okay and it's rooted in a lot of pride mm -hmm. that's number two um when you look at the bible when god said in the, in the book of genesis chapter one it talks about when god created the male and the female he created them in his likeness and image mm -hmm. right so male male and female Though God has given the male a specific role and the woman a specific role, both of those roles are equal. Yeah. yeah. So the man, so and and when the Bible says that you know when the two become one, when someone is really following the principles of the Word of God, when I look at my wife, I should see myself, mm. and vice versa, mm -hmm. because she's my. I'm, we're one. So with the feminist movement, is it, it it comes? I'm looking at it is destroying. Um, it's not only destroying marriages, but it's destroying families and it's bringing mm. in this web of confusion, mm -hmm. this web of confusion. So you, you got children who don't even know what to choose. Mm -hmm. They don't know what to believe. Yeah. Um, the moment when you say that you don't need a man, mm -hmm. well, I'm sorry, God created you to need a man mm -hmm. yes. and God created man to, to need, need a woman. woman. Yes. Yes. So when the moment when if this movement comes, well, I don't need a man. I can do it all by myself. You really don't want to do it by yourself. That's draining. It, it, it's draining. I tried it. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want that. I tried, and I just want to just no, no, piggyback no, off no, of yeah. you. I literally was trying to do everything my husband was supposed to do, and he literally was like, why are you putting all of this on your plate and making this your responsibility? And I was like, Again, I was just in my pride of like, I cannot let you be above me, yes. right? And that was a pride thing. Yeah. And I think it was just out of fear of letting him have that type of control and power and abusing me, wow. right? And yeah. and that was the fear. And that's actually why a lot of women just choose, no, I'm not letting a man lead me. I'm not even going to fall into that, which is fair, mm -hmm. right? So just to piggyback off of that, mm -hmm. um, I wanted yeah. to say oh, that. Absolutely. I and, and, I, and, and I know some feminists, I have, <laughs> have some in my family, but most of them that I know, they're not happy. No. Deep down, they miserable. Yeah. They're miserable. And um, they're hiding behind this 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 thing called feminism. Um, another thing too, um, 
as we know that marriage is under attack and family is under attack, those are the first two organ the first two things that God established in the book of Genesis was marriage and family. Mm, so of course the enemy is going to create something to come against the very establishment, marriage and family. Right. And so um I, I would just challenge a lot of women who identify as feminists to really, uh, really, really take a deep look within themselves mm-hmm. and, 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 and see what led you there. Yeah. What led you to become a feminist? Your fight really is not against the man. Your fight is against your unhappiness. Your fight is against yourself. It's mm-hmm. not against the man. Yeah. I understand that a lot of a lot of those feminists, you know, because I have some of my family, you know, they didn't have their fathers. And the men that they had around weren't good examples. Mm-hmm. And I understand that. I can understand why they would push a woman to anger. But at the same time, every male is not like that. Thank yeah. You, you yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, to big it pity back <laughs> to piggyback off of what my husband said, like, mm-hmm. um, I you know, I grew up in a home where, you know, my mom was always the one taking lead. She never mm-hmm. let whoever she was with lead. Mm-hmm. And it never worked, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I grew up seeing that dysfunction. I grew up seeing that um I thought it was a norm. You know, mm-hmm. so when I got Same. into my marriage, I'm thinking this Same. is how it's supposed to be <laughs> like, you know, and I never really gave him the opportunity mm-hmm. to be the leader of yeah. my home. And, you know, it caused controversy. But now that I've learned and I'm still learning, you know, you got to submit. Yeah. You got to submit, put the ego down and let your man be the priest of the home. Let your man let him do what God has ordained him to do, which was to lead. Mm-hmm. Right. I saw on, um, I think it was Facebook, um, somebody was saying, a young man was saying, like, how his mom did it all by herself. And he salute her. And that's, and I, and, you know, salute, yeah. you know, but I'm sure she, if I, I mean, I honestly don't believe that she, you know, wanted to do that. Right. I, I, I believe she wanted to do that with the, the, that father, you right. know, of that child. So I'm just like. Who knows to say, yeah, she did by herself, but I know she was tired. I know she was drained. And then I also noticed, like, it really does scar us women, you know, when they have to do everything by themselves. Yeah. And then when they get into a relationship, someone, um, a, a man that is level-headed, that has his stuff together, or, yeah. you know, that's getting it together. And, you know, he's he's um, healed in a lot of areas. Mm-hmm. They tend to self-sabotage because they they're do. so used true. to doing it on their own. Oh, true. I do it by myself. Oh, that's and true. I'm just like. That's true. You know, that it it causes a wedge in the home. So now the kids, it's like, okay, well, is this normal for mommy to pick up the load and do everything by herself? Or is is dad supposed to to leave? Like, it it does cause confusion in the home. Yeah. You know? I agree. I grew up confused about it Mm because I thought, like I said, I thought it was the norm for, Mm -hmm. uh, um, see, women in my family, my grandma had to do it by herself. A mom. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I guess this is how it's supposed to be. But no. You know, this they is a curse. To do it by and it we're going to break it. It is <laughs> you know a curse. It says it in Genesis. I'm sure you probably yeah. could quote it. It literally says it's like women will always want to have dominion over their husbands, but husbands will always. Yeah, husbands will rule over their um, mm-hmm. over their women. And see, a lot of people take that, uh, that out of context. When when you look at the word rule, it's not a, I'm going to dominate the woman. Mm-hmm. Most men take that out of context. It's not about dominating. When God says the man shall rule over the woman, we are naturally supposed to be providers and protectors for our women. Mm-hmm. So when the Bible says the man shall have rule over you, it's meaning to provide and to protect you and to defend you, not to rule you with an iron fist, not to mistreat you, not to abuse you, mm-hmm. and not to mishandle you. Because the Bible says this, if I mishandle my wife, God won't even hear my prayer. Come on, mm-hmm. somebody. That's what a lot saying. of people don't want to talk about that. Yeah, so God, that's what God is more concerned about how I treat my wife than he is about me having this large platform to preach to people. He's yeah. more concerned about her tears. Yeah, that's a heavy role too as a man. Oh he, yes. that, that's a, that's so he's more concerned about that. And and I gotta add this too. And mm-hmm. a lot of uh, uh, feminists, like I, the ones in my family, a lot of them like to hide behind religion. You know, Jesus, my man. Let me tell you something. <laughs> What? I never heard that. Oh, yeah. Boy. Jesus, my I man. Never I don't heard need that. a man. I got Jesus. I heard that I'm in church growing up. I'm a, I'm a, let's be transparent. Look, I, we love the Lord and everything, but your body got needs. Come on. Yeah. And, and, and Jesus ain't going to need the needs. <laughs> Come on. Like no, that. I'm so no, you, I'm not saying that. You know, Jesus ain't putting me on me like that. Respectfully. He's you want a man. Yeah. yeah. But you don't know how to humble yourself 
Because I'm pretty sure, and I haven't seen it, a lot of them had good men come their way. Mm -hmm. And they sabotaged it. So you want a man, you just need to learn how to humble yourself and to be that woman that a man would desire. Stop saying Jesus is your man. That's, and see, that's what the Mm -hmm. book I be talking about Mm -hmm. is that I... Like, I had this big social media following. Mm -hmm. I had all these men that wanted me. I've been in, you know, celebrity houses and hanging out with celebrities and dated even celebrities. Mm -hmm. And so to humble myself and ask myself if I am somebody that a man would want to be with. And when I say be with, because so any man can want to lay down with you, but they want to wife you. And so a lot of... A lot of women are walking around. Yes. Come on. And they like, oh, a man should want all of this. And they have this big ego. But the fact that a man hasn't wifed you yet, you do have to ask yourself these Why? very humbling questions that mm. I put in the book of like, am I, do I have a serving spirit or a selfish one? Come on. And I watched this podcast where this woman said, I will never put a man before me. I will never put my husband before me. And it's like. So he's going to marry you knowing you'll never even make him a priority. You're always going to put yourself first. Then I'll have children with you. And Mm -hmm. you probably might leave me because you're still not going to be happy, Mm -hmm. right? Because I'm going to disappoint you. So I'm just setting myself up for failure. Mm -hmm. And I just just had to make that point. You know what I mean? To piggyback. Yeah, Yeah, real quick. Because to (laughs) piggyback. (laughs) I have to say this. This is so big. Like when you said what the lady said, she would never put her man before herself. Mm-hmm. crazy this is what marriage is about selflessness yeah selflessness it's not about you yeah. okay it's about your partner mm-hmm. okay i feel like it's a, a okay and i'm not saying don't don't take what i'm saying out of context still care for yourself now yeah. <laughs> you know right, right, but right, 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 right. Right. but there's going to be some situations where you're going to have to put your partner first yeah. okay you may not feel like getting up and I don't know, cooking for your husband after 12 hours of work. But if he asks no. you, you know, you may have to put yourself to the side and do it anyway. You yeah. may not feel like having the house clean when you get home because the kids was just drained you all day. But if he's working hard and he wants to come on to a clean house, do that for that man. Put mm-hmm. yourself to the side and do that for that man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like things in that way. You may not even, I mean, hey, you both could be going through something, right? Mm-hmm. And this is something that I had to experience myself and I had to learn. Mm-hmm. You may be going through something, you both going through, you know, your own battles within yourself. Yeah. Okay, but sometimes you may have to just, okay, let me put how I feel to the side and hear what my husband has to say. Right. And let me be here for him. Yeah. You know, and then eventually he'll listen to me. Mm-hmm. But let me be here for him, you know, in the other way around. Right. So I'm like, it's not about you. Once you get married, you is out the window. In the in terms of it's not just you by yourself anymore. You, yeah, are, you have to care about not yourself, but you have to care about somebody else. Yeah. You know, so you guys are one. You're one flesh. Mm-hmm. You go. And so and just, I just to, yeah, I'm going to let you talk, no, no, but no, no, just yeah, to piggyback yeah, yeah. really fast is that one thing that I learned in my season of separation is that to serve my husband is, is literally serving myself because he's like my right arm. Ooh, so if good. I don't take care of him, yeah, I'm know. not taking care of, of myself. Me. That's Come on. so true. Yo, one. I was, you're one. And yeah. when you go into a marriage with an independent mindset of yes. like, you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do that. And mm-hmm. when they're not, you're like, you're not doing all of these things. Well, what are you going to do to help pick up your right arm. Yeah. You have to, and you might have to change a yeah. lot about yourself. I had to lose weight, change my diet, get my cortisol levels checked to make sure they're regular. All these random stuff what I would have never that? thought about what because what I got to make sure I, my husband wanted a woman who has wisdom because he needed that. You know, he's like struggling mentally with certain things and I don't I don't have the skill set. So I had to learn. I had to watch videos and read books. And I was willing to do that because he's my right arm. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But go ahead. Sorry. I no, no, you're good. No, no, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I got a snap for that. But I, I wanted to uh, piggyback on something you said. Uh, like a lot of those women that had those mindset, well, you know, I'm not going to put my, I'm going to put myself before the man. Yeah. I I'm going to tell you something. Like, a lot of those girls who think you you could just have a pretty face and a nice body and that's all a man should just want from you, mm-hmm. that's, other, that's 30 women with a nice face and a nice body. And so... A, a lot of men, and when especially like before I got married, when I was out there, before I got saved, like a lot of men, we would know whether or not we're going to take you home to mama or you're just going to be coming to the bedroom. Mm. 
We know that we we know we know we know what category to put you in, and a lot of those girls who had who had that mindset of oh I'm I'm a pretty face and this and that. When you really get to really get to know them, they don't really have a lot going on for themselves. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of them are unhappy. A lot of them are miserable. A lot of them trauma. are alcoholics. Trauma. You got a lot of trauma. You got to work got through. A trauma. Yeah. A lot of them are drug addicts. They pop pills and mm -hmm. they they suicidal. They got low self esteem and and all of, all of this stuff going on with them and and they have to put on this facade to pretend like they're happy, but mm -hmm. they're really not. They're really drowning and they're sinking. Yeah. So uh, that really. Even though they're talking out of ego, if you look at it from a spiritual lens, you're crying out for help. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you don't know how to say, I need help. Yeah, I so, agree. Yeah. And, I, and I, I have a question um, as well. I'm going to say the question and then I want to also say something with it. Is that my question is, what is leadership and submission? Because I'll say I'm a submissive wife and then people are like, oh, so you're a slave. And I want to talk about what submission oh, looks wait, like and good. what them being the head even looks like. Because, again, we kind of talked about it. It looks like, oh, just having this dominance. Mm -mm. And I just want to say that the need for them to also need to be a leader comes from again um being afraid of letting them have control so i just wanted to pinpoint that i want to add to your well what does healthy submission Shin. and healthy leadership look oh, like love that yes. yeah because there I, is a difference mm. there's a huge difference but go ahead go ahead yeah so what is you what is your guys's answer to that you want to well reverse? the bible says this um the head of every man is christ right and mm -hmm. the head of every uh, woman is man and the children, I mean, the woman is the head of the children. So talking about, you know, so healthy leadership from a male's perspective is a man submitting to God. That's yes. number one. Number one. Number one. Just posted I that. I don't care Just about that. what the world <laughs> got to say. Real men submit to God. Real Come men on. worship God. Snap Real men snap. live for God. I don't care what Real nobody got to yep. say. Yes. Real men. Real men. Because the Bible says, let us make a man. So in order for a man to come into his identity, you yep. got to know your creator. Mm -hmm. Come on. And if he if he don't, it's a mess. It, yes. It's a hot me. mess because yes. he's leading by, he's submitting to his flesh and his needs and his desires in the world. And so if he's not submitting to God, no one's there to check him. He's not going to a place of leadership himself to be able to lead. And I just can't keep no, going no, on. He will, <laughs> and, then, no, and, then, right. and then, you know, it, it, he doesn't have his identity. He doesn't know who he is. No. So how could you lead if you don't even know your identity? And your identity comes mm. from the one You don't even know where you're you. going. Yeah. And, uh, so how could you leave you, if you don't know where you're going? And a lot of women can't submit to a man that don't know where he's going. Yep. That's Thank number you. one. Yep. So, you, need that to, you need that first, women. Yes. Women, you need to submit to a man that submits to God, for period. sure. Yes. yes. That's period. Yes. And when he submits to God, the Bible says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved love the, the church. church. Yeah. What did Christ do for the church? He, he gave his life. Yeah, yes. he died for, died for the church. He died for the church. Mm -hmm. So I have to love you. With that same love, that, that with that same love, and then two, a man has to have a vision. Oh, again, yeah. where are you going? Where are you leading me? Where are you leading me? Yes. I'm not. You're not gonna lead me like you're not gonna lead me like the children of Israel wandering around the desert for forty years. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, well, where are we no, going? for real. Don't do that. <laughs> where is we going? And then you got this vision. Talk is cheap. I need to see you put in action behind that yeah mm -hmm. so now you got this vision now i see you working this vision and a woman by nature is to help me she's like mm, okay this brother got something going for us so how can i help him yeah and you become naturally submissive yeah, yeah. oh yeah oh yeah it's a trend when you confident confident and when he's confident in mm -hmm. where he's taking you you're naturally submissive. he's like oh yes exactly. baby lead go yeah. ahead handle it yeah. exactly and i think that a lot of men too we have to be better at choosing a wife or choosing to help me you can't That's always true. now you got to be attracted to her Cause nobody want nobody they're not attracted to, but right. then at the same time, don't base it ba all based off looks, looks yeah. where it's a mindset. And can this woman add value to what I have, add value to this vision that I have yes. laid out mm -hmm. that I want to pursue? That's what you should be thinking. And then when a woman comes, okay, how can the vision that I have for myself and this vision that this man has, how can we make this become one? Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's then, healthy. Then when you answer those questions and, 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 and y'all can sit and be like, you know what? Y'all can come to that agreement. Submission to one another would be so Natural. easy. It's easy. It would yeah. just flow. Mm -hmm. I got to piggyback off what you yeah. just said. So when you have pointed out what Christ did for the church, was, which was but uh, give us life, right? Which mm -hmm. was die. I just had this perspective. So... You would have to, like, for the married folks, give 
you have to die to yourself. Yep. Girl. You have That's to die to yourself. Just yes. like this is just like Christ died for his bride. You got to I'm not it's not just don't think of it as a literal sense, but you gotta die to your old ways. Yeah. Because you can't have the same you can't have the same ways, the same mindset that y'all had when y'all first got married. You can't, yeah, that ain't gonna last 10 years later. One thing you said is dying to self. Okay, mm-hmm. so I definitely agree. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing just to add on to that is I learned in my season of separation is that when you are walking up to the altar, that is what you're doing. Like we have these fun weddings. Yeah, I had to say this. We have these fun weddings. Yeah, but it's really to die to yourself. And I had no idea that's what was happening. I thought I'm going to be loved. I'm going to be able to have a family and I'm going to be happy. Mm -hmm. And those were... uh, it's, that's so shallow to think, but that's what I thought. And then when I got into my marriage and my husband changed from, because of course, like we did get married and I do feel like it was more of the attractiveness yeah. towards each other and not sitting down and having the hard conversations. Yeah. 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 And then we got married and stuff. And then my husband kind of came out of that, like, oh, here's this, you know, amazing thing. He's like, hey, I got to wash you like with the word and you have some flaws Mm -hmm. and I need to wash you. And I was like, how dare you Mm -hmm. talk to me like that? Like how (laughs) dare you say that I'm imperfect? And I felt extremely offended. And then, you know, again, the serving part, I was like, how does this benefit me? Yeah. Me cooking, cleaning for you, how does that benefit me? You know, I'm working, I I was working as well. And I was like, um, you know, I work this, you know, this many hours and I come home and then I make you a plate. Are you going to put more money in my pocket? Are you going to, you know, that was my mindset. How crazy. And, you know, and, and I just, I I had a, a certain, a a selfish spirit for sure. Um, so now moving on, um, I had different questions, but I do want to ask this question because it's part of the book, your friends and who you associate with, here you go. Have a big <laughs> factor. Yeah, we got to talk, talk about, about that. I'm passionate about, about that. Yeah, one. go get ahead. My spirit, Who <laughs> you are around is, I know, okay, so quick testimony really, really fast. Yeah, yeah. Me ahead. and my husband had separated for a year. We didn't live together for a whole year. We didn't speak for six months. That's half a year. And then we slowly started dating again. And then now we're back together and a marriage is completely different. Mm. But... I noticed in that separation that there were certain friends who I could flip my mindset by them speaking to me, right? And I'm saying, well, you wouldn't even have to be in the separation if he just did his part. And all of a sudden, I'm like, yeah, you're right. (laughs) You know? And then I go talk to a different friend who's been married, and she's like, hey, Jada, you know, a couple things that you did Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have done as a wife personally. It's kind of wrong and it's kind of, you know, selfish. And I'm like, what? Well, how dare you? Like, Uh why you sound like him? (laughs) You know, and then now I'm like, dang, am I really so full of myself? Because if other women that I am expecting to validate my feelings are telling me, hey, you, you know, how you feel isn't reality. You know what I'm saying? And you do have to think about your partner. That is what led me to change. So it is crucial who you're friends with, but I want you guys to speak on that topic. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, because once he go, he go. Okay, Um, real quick. I just want to put this out here. Never, to all my married folks, or want to be married, never put your family mm. or single friends in your business. Family for uh, sure, too. Yeah. Hello. Because... Gospel um, right there. Look, when your family, your family, they, now, I'm not talking about the ones that don't take sides, but majority of the time, family, you know, they're going to take your side. Yeah. You know, they owe you, they owe their, their loyalty to you. Yeah. You know, so um, I wouldn't recommend you guys, you know, venting to your family because they're going to make you feel like your wrong is right. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's going to cause more controversy in your home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went through that, so I would know. Now, um, friends, yeah. Single friends, I also don't recommend that you would vent to. Yeah. Because they don't, they don't understand marriage. They right. don't understand the dynamic of marriage. They're so used to being alone. Or they're yeah. just so used to having a boyfriend that they can break up with any time. Right. And go, you know what they're saying? And work but, through the issues. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they just break up to make up. No. Marriage is a for life thing. It's a consistent thing. You mm-hmm. know? So, um, I, I venting to, to, to single friends, I should say. Now, married friends, I... I that will give godly canceling. Let me put it that way. Godly canceling, married friends is um, yeah. honestly, I think it's the best thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, who you vent to plays a huge role yeah. because it will either make or break your home. 
Simple mm. as that. Mm. It's something within every human being that doesn't like being held accountable or challenged, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, the most wise thing the Bible says in the book of uh, in the book of Psalms, a a, 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 a a man of understanding will attain unto wise counsel. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, it is very important to who you place yourself around, because whatever you open up your your ear gates to, it 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 takes resonance in your spirit, and you become that advice. Mm. And so, you want to place yourself around people when it comes to your marriage that will hold not only just you accountable but your partner accountable uh that's number okay. one um uh, number two um again i am piggyback on what she was saying don't put family or friends who don't understand the dynamic of marriage into your marriage yeah. it will make it worse because yeah. it's going to cause you to fight and argue mm-hmm. because at the end of the day um for especially for family members you and your spouse, right? Y'all have y'all issues, y'all flaws, y'all work it through, and y'all over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all, y'all on good mm-hmm. terms, but your mama and them, they and gonna grandmama and they ain't gonna forgive them. They no. ain't forgiving they ain't them. Right? Head. He still, yeah, he ain't changed, oh, yeah. she ain't yeah. changed, and, yep. and you, you gonna see what I say. Like, yep. Yep. don't, don't, don't do that. Yeah. Um, another, another thing, too, um, I think that a lot of us, like when, when you talked about when you when you went to the altar, I mean went to when your your husband went to the altar to get married, a lot of us really don't understand what we're doing in that moment. Mm-mm. It's just about the exciting of the marriage. It's so you're excited, not, yeah. You know, you're excited. You know, everybody's here to support. You got the good food, the good music, mm-hmm. and all of that. But marriage starts right after the ceremony. Yeah. Like the real life stuff start to rid the real challenges. Because oh, can I still love you with that same? energy when we got married when you ain't looking the best yeah you know you 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 when you looking rough when when (laughs) when your money funny Mm -hmm. when your health is funny Mm -hmm. do i can i really love you Mm -hmm. can i really wake up to you when you got an attitude and your Mm -hmm. breath stank and i want to go off on you yeah Mm -hmm. can you love your man when he going through his little ish yeah or when the devil attacks him can you pray over him to help deliver those demons off of him as well because if your husband falls into a depression you don't know how they're going to react when family members start dying come on you don't know how they're gonna you don't know how they react to certain hardships you ain't been through it yet and do are you a prayer warrior do you believe that y'all gonna come through out of that come on i got to piggyback real quick and this goes back to selflessness yeah Get yourself out of the way, because see, okay, he came at you sideways, but you don't know what he's mentally battling, uh, um, um, battling mentally. Mm-hmm. So now you're ready to go off, but you don't know what he, what type of work that he probably endured before he came home. Right. You don't know what could have happened. You right. know what I'm saying? Yep. So instead of just so you know quick to go off, pray. Pray. Yeah. Pray. And honestly, I have to put myself out there. This is something I'm currently learning. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, growing up, the women in my family, we will check somebody in a heartbeat, blase, blase. Um, but I, like, with me, this is teaching me how to be a prayer warrior for, prayer warrior for my husband. This mm-hmm. is teaching me to be more patient with him in this area. Right. I always thought I was the most patient one in the marriage until I realized there's some areas I am impatient with that I right. need to grow right, right, with, right. with patience in, you know? So mm-hmm. um, that that's a big one right there. Yeah. I, I just have to piggyback. Yeah. And for the women that feel stuck, I've... Just like becoming a submissive woman is so crazy because the power you hold by doing that, mm-hmm. like me being afraid of doing that, it's so crazy because I was afraid. I'll give a couple points. One, yeah. I was afraid that my feelings won't be valid or like I won't have a voice. What I noticed by just letting my husband make the decisions and just following that, he asks me for all the advice he comes to me for every question yeah. he'll call me what do you think about this i don't know what to do i'm That's like wow what? Yeah. and then i say it what i think and then he does it mm-hmm. so i end up having a leadership role yeah by just letting him be the final say but he values mm-hmm. my wisdom yeah and so women are struggling so much of letting them lead and maybe you might have to give up you know let him fall a little bit or let him make decisions that you wouldn't agree with for a little mm-hmm. while but you letting him have that position he's going to start seeking out leadership because whoa my wife and children are kind of like following everything i do mm-hmm. let me make sure you know and they value my advice they yeah. value my guidance let me make sure i'm i'm straight you yeah. know so i just wanted to say that pointer <laughs> too to, to add on what you're saying like, like with that word submit right when you look at it from an etymological you break it down it means she responds to you 
So, mm-hmm. with, in other words, like when when you're showing that leadership, a woman will naturally respond to that, right? Mm-hmm. And when she knows that she's valued, when she, when when a man knows that he can trust his woman, he will value her opinion. Mm-hmm. Because guess what? Y'all see what we don't see. Oh yeah. A woman, will, your woman, and she will call it out like, "Hey, you know what? That that dude over there you hanging out with, he ain't no good." Extra set of eyes. Right. Right. The extra set of eyes. You know that over there. Mm-mm, you missed that. Like a woman will really look out when when a man sees that, he will always value and respect your opinion and the things that you have to say. Because when I there's times when I happen to make a decision, hey babe, what you think about this? Mm-hmm. Because I know my wife is gonna. My wife is going to give me the real. She's going to tell me the truth. And she's going to give it to me from her perspective. I would never have to second guess what she thinks about something because she's going to give me that perspective. Mm-hmm. And when I when I confine in my wife, I'm like, you know what? A lot of us men, we'd be like, you know what? What she had to say actually make more sense. What I was getting ready to do, I'm glad I asked you. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, man, a man, when he knows that his woman has his back, Mm-hmm. And when he knows that he has that woman that he can trust, he's going to love her and value her in everything that he does. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to say then, too, mm-hmm. how should you communicate to your husband, right? Because I'll say a lot of women can say, well, my husband won't lead me. And I've noticed that women, the way you communicate to your husband, you have to speak to the king in him. When you're Ooh, communicating to him. That is good. Yeah. I mean, I, my mind is all over the place, but what do you guys think about what I said? Oh, like, how should you communicate to your husband as well? Because that, that falls into the submissiveness. Because some women were just like, hey, I'm letting him do it, but he's still not leading me or whatever. And I say, how are you communicating to him? Because it could be passive aggressive. You could still be trying to take the control. Mm-hmm. And he can feel that. He can sense that. He can, oh, sense, yeah. he can sense that you're, mm-hmm. you're might, you know, seem like, you know, you're letting him lead, but you're saying it so passive aggressive. You're saying it with attitude. Yeah. And now... And it's not working, you know, yeah. but go ahead. And then that'll be, we'll wrap it up after that. Okay. So real quick, real quickly, I'm going to sum up the scripture. Uh, the mm-hmm. Bible says that a soft answer turns away wrath. Ooh. So it all depends on your tone, mm-hmm. your spirit, mm-hmm. you know, cause you can say it softly, but you can, you can hear, you know, somebody trying to be smart or something. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it, de- it depends on how it's said, even if it is hard to say. Even if it is like, you know, a hard truth or if you have your own opinion or about some or you beg to differ, it's to me what I'm learning. It's all in it's all in the tone and it's all in the spirit. Like mm-hmm. is, is do you have a um, do you have a pure motive behind what you're saying or are you just doing this because you want to argue mm-hmm. or are you just doing this? Because, you know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? You're just trying to get an answer. You're just trying to get a response out of him. And then when he responds the way you didn't want it, then you're going to come for his Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You have to so. genuinely be willing to. to the cross. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, that scripture is the best answer I can give, give to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it says the women, you know, um, like the Proverbs 31 wife, I think. Actually, I don't know if it's in Proverbs 31, but um, like a biblical woman has a soft and gentle spirit. Yes. yes how you speak, you got to just let them. And uh, last point or two is, ladies, let your, if you've been kind of controlling the situation and you want to see your marriage shift, let him fall. Let him yeah. fall. We can Mom become mothering head. where we're so afraid of failure and we're so afraid of letting him lead that he's going to make everything fall apart. You know, the bills won't get paid and everything. Let things fall apart. That's how a boy learns how to be Hold. a man by falling and figuring out how to lead. Okay. From a man's perspective, <laughs> It took me to have to fall to realize that it took me to have to fall to realize the king I was. Yep. Ooh, yeah. If I had not mm. failed and went through some of the trials and tribulations, I would have not known my true value. Mm. So that's 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 true. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to mother me, be my wife. You took it out of my mouth, boy. I was oh. just gonna say. I was just gonna say. I, real quick, I heard the song. It's called "You're Not My Daddy." I forgot who sing it, but she's saying, "You're not my dad. You're my man." Be my husband, not my father. Yeah. I'm not your mom. I'm your wife. Yeah. So if you got to bump your head, bump your head. Yep. And if you're in a bill, don't, if the bills don't get paid, let this let this sink ship. 
And pray about it. And pray about it. Ask God, <laughs> you know what? The sink is going to ship. I have to. I've been trying to take control this whole time. And mm. now he's a child. That's why he acting like a child in the house. Mm-hmm. And he's sitting on the couch and not doing anything because you have taken the control this whole time. Let yeah. things fall apart so that he figures. And then when it, everything's it falling apart, honey, what do I do? What do we do? Help me. And yeah. then <laughs> let him lead and figure it out. And yeah. once I did that, my husband started, oh, he started getting so good with decision making and yeah. leadership and confident and testosterone boost and everything and your marriage just gets better you respect him and then uh, more because you love how dominant he's being you love how he's take now being the leader and he loves you more because you're letting him lead and yes. you believe in him you know so just to now wrap things up in the intro mm-hmm. um the outro i mean Thank you guys for coming today. Thank you for having us. Um, you guys are amazing. Definitely going to have you on uh, episode two. Yeah. And then if you guys have like a business or whatever you want to promote real quick, just to end off the podcast, please. Um, yeah. Uh, so real quick, I have a family business that we're doing. Um, our team does taxes and we do, uh, we help people with um Entrepreneurs, small businesses, people that work um, out of homes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we can help with any type of financial situation you have. It is just C B uh, C P B um, at TrueBalance.com. Once again, C P B at TrueBalance.com. If you have any more information, I'll put a link in the bio too. The link's in the bio, <laughs> and yeah, my Instagram is Cabria K. Um, I also have the link in my bio, so you guys hit me up if you need any more information. Anything with you? Uh, yeah, so um, if um, I have a business, I have a life insurance business. If you or your family or anybody you know needs life insurance, I am your guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also an author. I have a book that is out on Amazon right now, and I'm currently revising it for part two. It's called Keys to Encounter Yahweh, A Guide to Unlocking Intimacy with Abba. It talks about eight keys on how to develop your relationship with God. Um, you can find me on Facebook at DeAndre McGee or on Instagram at I am Prophet DeAndre McGee. Uh, if you need a speaker at any conferences or youth events or church events, hit me up and uh, we can talk about that. Thank you again for having mm-hmm. me on the show. Of Thank course. You so and then much. purchase my ebook and yes. it's called Congratulations. Uh, Who's the Prize Said Who? A Wife's Guide to Eliminate the Spirit of Ego. So if you loved our topic today and you want to hear more about my testimony as well, link in the bio to everybody's information. Mm-hmm. Please go support and we will definitely come back for another round of this. So mm-hmm. thank you guys. Mm-hmm.